Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we are going to create our first landing page inside Sketch. In case you missed the first part of this free series video, you can find it here or here or somewhere here. I'm not sure where YouTube puts stuff. But yeah, so if you already saw that or you know the basics of Sketch, then we can just move on. So let's roll the intro and let's get into it. Okay, so before we start, just make sure to download the link that I put inside the description and unzip the file. Once you unzip the file, you're going to see that you're going to have a UX native tutorial for the folder and inside you're going to have a actual image and all the assets you need to create for it. And also the sketch file in case you're interested. But for now, let's put this aside, create a new document in sketch. So let's open sketch, hit new document, open up, create an R board. So we, for that, we go to R boards and we select the HD version, zoom out, hold spacebar, drag the R board, make the window a bit smaller, go to the UX native tutorial folder, drag the image, zoom out a bit more, drag the image onto your document, hold shift, make it smaller so that it has the same width as our R board, drag it down, close this, Make this bigger, zoom in, and voila. The reason we're doing this is so that it's a lot easier for you to see exactly what you need to do. Initially, when you first start out, this is the best practice I will recommend for everyone. If you like a design, just get the JPEG or get an image of it and just drag it to your document so you can visually see as you design how elements are aligned or how they're placed. So now that we have the design that we want to create above our artboard, let's drag this a bit closer to the artboard. Okay. First thing we're going to do is to break this into easy steps. So step number one is to set our layout grid. Step number two, we're going to create this navigation bar on top. Step number three, we're going to create this left side. Step number four, we're going to create the right side. And step number five, we're going to create the bottom part. OK, so let's get into it. Step one, we need to have a layout grid so we will know exactly how to place our elements. And to do that, we select our R board. We go to view canvas. Layout settings here. At the total width, just because our R board is 1400 pixels, roughly, we're going to put 1200 with an offset of 120 pixels. We're going to center this. And I would like to have columns that are 90 pixels with, with a gutter of 10 pixels, which is good. After we're done, we hit confirm. Now we know how to place the elements inside our actual landing page. So to create the navigation, we will need a button, some text and a logo. So to do that, let's go ahead. First, we will need to create a rectangle just so we can align all the elements inside this rectangle. So everything is nicely organized. So we're going to create a rectangle. Let's make this one 70 pixels. Remove the borders and we can have it as it is right now. Let's create the button to create that. We hit R. For the rectangle tool, drag a rectangle, set this to 54 pixels and let's say 130 pixels in width and remove this, click on the fill button, click on this, select your color and then afterwards let's add some text. So to do that, we hit T on our keyboard, click, we're going to change this to white. I'm going to use Montserrat. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but you're going to have the fonts in the file as well. In case you don't have them, we're going to select this to bold 14 pixels. It's nice. We're going to call this register. Good. Click outside the box, select both elements using shift. Make sure everything is aligned. And once it's aligned, let's group everything and call this button. Just drag this, put it at the edge. Now it's a lot easier for us to just take this and copy the text, which is here. 
just going to put this back. We're going to zoom a bit in so we can see what we're doing. We can actually disable this so we can see our elements better. This, let's grab this color and let's call this login. Good. Let's live. Now to see the distance between elements, just hold down your option key and just hover over the element you want to measure towards. And you're going to see that this is 50 pixels. Or if I want to see the distance between this and this one, if I hover of, over this element, I'm going to see the distance between the edges of the element and my text. So now that we know this is 50 pixels, we can zoom out a bit, copy this, and you can easily copy it by holding the option key and just dragging the element that will create like an instant copy of it. This we can change to home. We can do the same trick holding option key, just dragging it. I'll say to 40 pixels. This looks good. What else did we have? Home, rent and contact. So we're going to have home. This we're going to align to the left just because we already measured the distance between the two. I'm going to align this to the left side as well. Both 40 pixels. Good. OK, and we're going to change this to rent. And this one to contact. Now let's select all these three elements and make sure they're horizontally aligned. So we click here. Boom. Now everything is grouped and let's Okay, and afterwards, let's grab a rectangle and make sure we add a visual element on our menu so that we can see on what page we are at. Like a rectangle, make it the same, roughly the same width as the text. Let's say place it around three, four pixels underneath. And let's just take everything and make a group and call this navigation text good now that we have everything grouped we can select this and make sure it's vertically aligned so that it's in the center of the page so the navigation it's almost done what we still need to do is to add a logo and let's create a fake logo so we're gonna use our oval tool so we click o Track that. Let's make this 46 pixels just because we know that this button has 54, so it's roughly the same height. Remove the border. Let's make the same color. Pick the color from the button to make let's make it the same color. And now we want to add sort of like a line or whatever you want, just as a placeholder for now we'll do. But we're gonna just create another rectangle track this over our element, remove the border, make it any color that we want. It doesn't really matter. Change the rotation to, let's say 60 pixels, minus 60, minus 60 pixels. Yeah, I think it's like, let's put it minus 40 pixels. Yeah, that looks good. Select both elements using your shift key. And then afterwards, here on the top part, you're going to have some options to unify or subtract certain shapes. So what we're going to do now is to subtract this rectangle from our circle. So what we're going to do, we're going to hit this. So we're going to subtract our rectangle from our circle. And then we're going to move this logo and let me toggle back the layout grid so I can see where I need to place it. Place it here and voila, we already have the navigation. Now we can remove this rectangle because we don't need it. This was just for us to get a better reference on how to place the elements. So let's delete that. Let's select everything that we created so far. Hit Command G, group everything and call this navigation. Good. Now we have the navigation and play with this around. We, we will arrange everything once we are done. So now that we have step one done, we're going to step two. So let's create the rest of the design. On step two, we have a rectangle, some text, the button that we already created, 
and pretty much that's it. So let's start by creating a rectangle and just create the rectangle. Let's select the color of this to blue, change it to two pixels in width, two pixels in height, sorry, give it a width of like 45. Okay. Once we have that, we will need some text. Again, the easiest way to do it is to just get a text that we already have. Command C, click outside the group so we don't paste the text in our group. Control V, and now we can just simply drag this and use it as our new text. So it's office space. Cool. Once we do that, let's make sure it's aligned to left. Bring it next to our rectangle and let's make this 16 pixels so it's a bit bigger than okay and let's correct like to make it office and let's make this office then again copy and paste this text make it 50 pixels drag it set the line height to 70 pixels so the line height is the height between the two text lines so it's like 70 pixels distance between these two text lines okay once we have that let's type the new way to uh, to discover okay this looks good. Click outside. So we have that. And now we need the other text, which copy and paste again. Change this to 20 pixels. Drop the line height now because this is too high to, let's say, 37. Yeah, looks good. And let's write booking company. Savings invoicing hit enter and reporting docs. Cool. Now that we have that, now we need a call to action, but we already have one, so we can just go ahead, make sure that we select the button control C or command C on a Mac, sorry, click outside the actual group so you make sure that you paste this element on your artboard control v duplicate the button drag it over here line the text to the left click on it book viewing now that the text is a bit bigger than the actual box, what we will do is select the box by double clicking on our button and then dragging this till we have roughly the same distance between the two elements. Select then afterwards these two elements, so make sure they're selected here. Go on the top part and make sure they're aligned properly. Once we have that, we can just copy and paste the text that we have above change this to virtual tour click outside and let's make this 16 pixels as the one above here give it a distance of like 32 pixels so just align it to the button and voila that's it now the step two is done step three sorry is done so moving on to step four. Okay, so now that we have the left part, what we will need to do is to create the right part. But we want to make sure that everything is balanced. So the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna use these rulers on top to define where we need to create our elements. So I'm just gonna add some rules here. And also we're gonna add one in our in the middle of our page. So as you can see now, we have two equal boxes on the left and on the right. So we know now that all the elements have a distance between the middle of the page and between the edge of them of roughly one column. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to keep the same distance for our images as well. So we're going to grab our rectangle tool, 
drag an image and we're going to use these columns as a guide so we can know exactly the width of the image. We're going to remove this. We're going to copy and paste. We're going to make sure that the distance between these two elements, just so we are consistent, is, consistent is 10 pixels because we have 10 pixels between our columns. So we want to make sure that we have 10 pixels between our elements as well. So now we have nine. If we drag, we have 10 pixels. Drag this all the way down. Copy this. Paste it. And then just switch the position of these two shapes. And now everything looks nice and balance sort of because in order to create that balance we will need this element here so to create that what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit o on our keyboard holding shift we're gonna draw a circle of 10 pixels we're gonna remove the border we're gonna then copy and paste this and make sure that the distance between these two elements is 10 pixels and after we do that holding shift we're going to select both of them and we're going to use a little trick. If you look here, you're going to see that you have an arrow. So this arrow allows you to multiply your elements as many times as you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out a bit. and We're going to hold shift, left click on this and hold it and start dragging it till we get the desired shape. Well, let's say I want to have a shape like this. It's perfect. So what I'm going to do now is let go of this, but not click anywhere else. Just because, as you can see on the left side, there were a lot of elements that were created and they're not grouped. So if I don't group them straight away, I will have to select every single one of them individually, which is going to be a pain. So what I'm going to do before hitting anything else, I'm going to hit Command G, group everything and call this dots. Now that I have this visual element, I'm just gonna drag it here. So it's right on the edge of my layout. And now if we zoom back and if we toggle off the layout, you're gonna see that all the elements are pretty much balanced in the page. And this is what you want. So now we need to add images. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is select all four shapes and using our fill option, just use upsplash, search photo. And here we can actually say, let's say cars. Oh, uh, sorry. We can actually look for something in particular. So let's say just because it's the new way to discover and it's a booking company. Let's say we are going to look for New York. Hit enter and this will populate our shapes with four random images of New York. Now, what I don't like is that I have this on top of my images. So to fix this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look on my right side where I manage all my elements. And I'm just going to drag this underneath my images so it sits in the back. Then while we are here, let's just group all these images and call the images them images. Perfect. We are almost done. We still need to add a circle. So we're going to hit O. We're going to draw a circle really quick by holding shift. Remove the fill because I only want to have the border and let's make this around six pixels drag this till I get the desired shape and once I'm done what I'm gonna do just because I want to be quick and efficient I'm just gonna get the taller color picker and I'm just gonna get that pink from there perfect now we're gonna do the search bar so to do that drag and drop a rectangle. Let's make it consistent with all the elements that we have so far on our page. So we know that this is 54 pixels. So we're going to make this 54 pixels as well. Remove the border, round the corners all the way to the top. 
so it looks like a pill shaped rectangle change the color to white add a drop shadow so that we can separate it from our other elements let's make this around 10 pixels in blur change the color to a light gray and voila we have the search box now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit t just because we want to have a text and we're gonna right search drag this here oh it's actually search office so it's search office but you can write whatever you want search office we're gonna drop this to 40 pic 14 pixels and we're gonna change the color of it for a light gray perfect and now to create the button, what we're going to need to do is hit O, drag our button. Let's make it 40 pixels. Perfect. Remove the border, click on fill, change the color to blue. And now going back to our folder, we're just going to grab icon drag and drop it to our artboard shrink it a bit shrink it a bit more we're gonna leave this as at 20 pixels we're gonna hit the tint that will add color to our icon we're gonna select both of these align them command G to group them and now we have the search button once we have all the elements nicely placed we're just gonna select them group them select all of this that we created group this as well and we're gonna call it right side we're gonna do the same thing for this bar we're gonna group it to left side Perfect. And now the only missing part is the social media and the help button. So now step five, creating the last bit of our landing page. So to create this bottom part, we need some text. Again, we can use the text that we already have on our canvas. Copy and paste that, change it to Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Click outside, change this to 40, 14 pixels just because we don't. It's a secondary information. It doesn't need to be that big. Place it here. Just toggle on the layout again so you can see the edge of the layout. So you make sure you're right at the edge. Click that. Toggle it off again. And now let's copy and paste this text again. Change this to talk to an expert. Good. Copy and paste this again. We're using the alt. Okay. Changing this to question. Information mark. And just to have a visual separation between these two, let's make this one regular good and we are almost done the only thing we need to do is to make our button with our good looking advisor so let's do that we're gonna zoom out to do that again you can find the asset on inside the folder that i linked in the description let's zoom out a bit drag and drop this into our r board Shrink it a bit. Boom. That's it. Almost done. Now what we're going to do, we will need to mask this part with a shape. So to do that, we are going to do the following. We're going to create circle. Let's say 50 pixels. A bit. No. We're going to create, let's say... 
70 pixels. This looks good. Once we have the shape, let's remove the borders, zoom a bit out, get our color picker and select the pink. Perfect. Now zoom back in, grab this. Now a quick way to change the position of a layer if you want to have it on top is to use command X. So that will cut basically your layer and command V. So this will paste the layer on top of everything that you have on your left panel. So once we did that, let's make this a bit smaller, drag it. This looks good. Drag it over here. And we're going to do, we're going to make a copy of this. So it's going to control C, control V. We're going to have two copies and we're going to have another copy of the circle. And I'm going to show you why. So the way we're going to do this is we are going to mask these two shapes with the same circle, but in different positions. So the first circle, I want to cut the bottom part of the image and the other circle, I want to have the top part of the image so I can put it here. Let me show you. This will be a lot easier to explain. So just grab these two, right click and hit mask. This has masked the bottom part of the image, but also the top part. So that's why on the second image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the oval on top. So I have the bottom part masked, but the top part, it's uh, OK. So what I'm going to do is same thing, just grab those, click mask, and now we have the top part and the bottom part. And what we're going to do now is go to our oval, remove the fill. Oh, sorry. Go to our oval, remove the fill because we don't need it. Do the same thing for the other mask that we have. Remove the fill and we're going to grab this control X, control V. So it's on top of our shape, put it here and add the remaining part, which we're going to do the same control X, control V. We're going to drag it and voila. That's how you make a person coming out of a circle. Command G. So everything it's grouped. You hit the will to toggle back our layout grid. Drag this all the way to the edge. Add the text next to it. If we are happy with how it looks, we're going to just command group this. We're going to make sure that this is aligned as well. And I think everything looks pretty good. I'm just going to delete that. Add this bit more to the top. Drag this bit to the bottom. Now the distance is equal between the two. Now the magic, we're going to group everything and we're going to make sure that everything is centered horizontally. So we have the same edges on both sides. We're going to toggle this off. We're going to remove this. Okay, I'll toggle this off and voila. This is how you make your first home page. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And as always, on your way out, please make sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.